And welcome to another I have no idea where we showcase the most exciting tactical battles of World of Tanks and explain thoughts processes involved in achieving uh, those outcomes. So in today's battle we are going to showcase the latest tier 7 Japanese tank destroyer uh, which we have pl started playing yesterday and uh, we had an extremely uh, good battle on Ghost Town so this is going to be the highlight and I'm going to try and give you three tips uh, what we did and what you can do uh, to push the tempo in the games and get results uh, similar to the one we had. So let me take you to the game right now. So here we are in our latest tier 7 Japanese tank destroyer. Uh, how do we start the battle? What do we do? We take a look at the map. Uh, well, first thing we do, we uh, are toxic in chat towards our light tanks, which have decided to both go on one side. Uh, but luckily you don't see that because my camera is covering what I type. Uh, nobody's a saint, right? Uh, what I uh, do, and this is tip number one, don't be stubborn. I really like to go onto the right flank and support my light tanks, but <laughs> as you can see on the minimap, almost nobody went there, so even though this is my prefer preferred place to go, I didn't go there, and there's no point in being stubborn. So instead, I chose to go here. I have a quite tough frontal armor, so I decided to take this risky peek and see if I get spotted, and I did. That tells me that the enemy light tank is in fact in typical light tank bush. Now I'm checking also by peeking if I'm getting spotted from that bush, that means the medium tanks are not there. But I just confirmed this again, light tank is there. So what I know right now, we have a massive advantage on this flank our useless light tanks at least are pushing uh, without waiting for anything uh, we can see that the team is advancing so i guess tip number two is look at the minimap and follow the flow of the game now that i know that our entire left flank is pretty much covered by our team we can freely go up here lucky shot here but th those tank destroyers have good gun stabilization you'd be shocked so expect plenty of snapshots from at least tier 5, 6 and 7, that's what I can tell you so far. Uh, I am taking an advantage of those lower tier tanks, there is absolutely no way they can penetrate me without aiming into my cupola. Uh, so I'm trying to wiggle and move as much as I can, I'm not uh, sitting still at all. But, what? just take a look at them, the map is crossed between us and the enemy team, but we do have an advantage and we are pushing the left side. So what I do is, I'm trying to follow the flow of the game uh, without overexposing myself too much and without taking any unnecessary damage. KV2 is of course always a risk, uh, we don't want to take any damage from him, so we try to reduce him, lucky shot with the latency, I think with worse internet that would probably miss, uh, but luckily that was not the case here. Get the first kill, uh, the kill, the amount of kills is going to be the highlight of this game, uh, because, well, we are the top dogs here, uh, we are really the alpha, that's going to be a lucky and good shot as well. A shell flew right over the ridge and hit the light, that's kill number two. And we do not stop because we are. We need to, what we need to do. We need to play to the pace of the game. It doesn't matter. Kill number three. It doesn't matter how much I want this game to evolve differently. All I have is the game that I got. So uh, lazy out aim here. Surprises bounce. Uh, surprise the bounce. Uh, I think of the size of the side of this T thirty four. I do get a shot from him. Uh, not a big deal, although I don't have plenty of hit points, I make sure that my penetration uh, is on the green, so that's kill number 4, and we keep on moving, uh, we are almost out of standard ammunition, kill number 5, uh, we are aiming towards the T-34, but that did not uh, happen, so we, with 5 kills to us, uh, this game being 3 minutes long already, is 10 to 6, uh, but it's not over yet, so we just keep pushing and keep pushing and pushing and pushing. Those games can sometimes be really hard when playing a tank destroyer. Uh, there's not... Just the, just the fact that you're playing a tank destroyer doesn't mean you have to sit on the red line. You can assault, especially with uh, tank destroyers that are as fast as this, even though I'm using a turbocharger, so that makes it even faster, but even without it, it would be still quite a nimble and mobile vehicle. So. Keep pushing the tempo, uh, this is not going to, uh, 
It damages my gun just before I fire, that probably caused the mess, uh, but I do, and I don't get the chance uh, to have a second shot in, so what's happening here now? Now, trying to fully aim, 331 roll, I uh, didn't quite get the kill on the type, uh, he can penetrate my lower plate, it's only I think 80mm stick or something really ridiculous low, but it's only the lower lower plate, so what I know here is that I can't just go in, unlucky there. Because if I do, I'm going to get shot from my right side by multiple tanks. And because I'm a tank destroyer, my hit points are quite low. So I only had 1000 to start and I only have 500 left. So luckily, got the snapshot in. But as expected, Helk has hit me for 250. That means I'm down to 280. I'm pretty much a two shot for uh, both the uh, Hellcat and VK if he's using the top gun. Uh, so VK gets spotted, so now I have the majority of the, of the information I need. Hellcat blind fired me, so I know exactly that he was on top of that little ridge line where I'm aiming right now. So I am blind firing with a high explosive because it's a Hellcat after all. So I fired this one and I don't think I saw the splash behind it. Uh, this is going to be to be confirmed later. I fired this one. I also don't see the splash, so I changed the camera angle. I advise you to do the same. I hold down my right mouse button. That definitely didn't splash behind. So I'm going to shoot one more, and this time I saw there was a splash on the ship behind. So I held down my right mouse button to uh, keep my mouse uh, pointing exactly at the same spot. So I think if that high explosive shell at least one of them connected with Hellcat, he's immediately a one-shot to us because of his low amount of base hit points. But with the light tank in the middle, he could be anywhere. Uh, it's possible that I won't make it if I rush in now. So I'm going to communicate with the IS. I'm going to let him know that I, I will help him. And I expected him to move up uh, because he's getting shot at. Uh, can't really justify going in because when you think about it, it's three versus five, and if I die, uh, all of a sudden this is start, going to start looking like a possible defeat, and uh, I don't want to throw this game. Like, I have a top gun, and quite decent damage. I could, I, I'm probably happy with the result I have, but I don't want to throw the game. I want to win this game. So, what do I do? I'm being patient. IS is not doing what I want him to do, but it's... Well, not much I can do about it. Uh, all I can do is be patient. So I need to wait for any sign of change on the, of the current, current situation. I need either some of the enemies to get spotted. I need someone from my team to relocate to be in a different position. But so far, none of this is happening. So the only choice I have is to be patient. Uh, it was a very dynamic game all the way up to this point. We've pushed the tempo as far as we could. We have, with our loadout, because we also use coated optics, we have 470 meter view range, and there is the VK. I fall back to be fully behind the bushes before I fire. Uh, because of that, I bounce, unfortunately, but I didn't risk getting spotted, because I, that's what I wanted to avoid. If I was to fire and Hellcat was here, he would spot me straight away. So. Uh, VK probably no longer um, our kill because he's down to a very low amount of hit points. But if we can find the Hellcat and we can find the Light Tank, we might actually get a Radley Walter. So let's go in and see what's there. Hellcat didn't expect us to be here. Uh, our mobility paid off. And now we just wait for the. There is the Light Tank. So seven kills and the, he's the Light Tank. Like. If he's using heat and he hits my lower plate, he could one-shot me. Luckily for me, he didn't. Then we get a nice run. And that's Radley Walters in uh, a tier 7 um, Japanese tank destroyer. All in all, what can I say about this tank? Uh, I think, at least based on the, on the uh, performance I got in this very game, this tank has a potential of being incredibly powerful. Uh, tier 6 is painfully slow, tier 5 is just average in all aspects, it's just a normal tank, typical tank destroyer. This thing in tier 7, I might keep it because it's mobile, it's accurate, it's, uh, it has decent DPM and it has insanely trollish armor. The upper plate is like 250 on tier 7 and uh, when it's using some gun depression, it doesn't have many much but... You'll see what I mean. Uh, let me take you to the post-game stats so I can tell you a little bit more about it. 
And here we are in the post battle results. As you can see, Radley Walters with 3800 damage in tier 7 is not even an haste tanker. This is an indication of the potential of the vehicle. I know the tank's just been released, so the expectations for the ace tanker and Bark of Excellence are probably going to be uh, higher because all the pro players are, are currently playing it. But this is a good indication that 1500 base experience is not enough for an ace tanker. That means that after just one day of this game being out in uh, with those tanks, some players have achieved crazy high results. And this, uh, I can confirm, it has potential, this, this beast. Uh, so let me quickly show you what it does, what it doesn't do. Uh, with my loadout, with the turbocharger and coated optics, uh, my mobility is 45 uh, forwards. Uh, kind of, it's not getting to 45 uh, easily, but it's capable of going this fast. And view range of 471 is really nice and useful because you don't no longer depend on your team to do all the spotting. So what we have is 1.8 second aim time. Uh, this is not from the full circle to the small circle. This is from like three quarters to one third. It's a war gaming's aim time, but the aim time is good, and the dispersion is also very good. So the tank overall is is a beast. With uh, bounty rammer, we get almost 3,000 DPM. This thing is going to top uh, plenty of tier seven uh, scores, and with the armor layout that it has. Mm, carry potential is there. I think I'm going to keep this vehicle uh, from the tech tree and when I move on my crew to the later um, tiers I'm going to recruit a base crew for this tank and uh, probably three market because I find this quite fun to play and I think uh, if you like uh, dynamic gameplay where you just put yourself in front of the enemy and uh, fight at close quarters this might be a vehicle for you. Uh, I guess that's it for today. Uh, and I'll see you on the next one, which I think I'm going to be discussing the uh, previous, previous one, the tier 6, which is a pain. Uh, but uh, we do have one game to showcase uh, some bush mechanics, which I would like to highlight and stay tuned for this one. Take care.